So this video provides an introduction to correlation. But before we dive in, let me mention if you're interested in a stats cheat sheet that covers a lot of key concepts, you can find one at CodyBaldwin.com. So correlation is used to understand the relationship between variables. An example is maybe we want to understand the relationship between the amount of rain we receive and the number of raincoats that are sold. And so what you could do is measure those things for 20 or 30 days and then plot them out in a scatter plot like this. And you could see based on this example, it looks like the relationship is positive. As there's more rain, there tends to be more sales of raincoats. So the way that we really measure correlation, we quantify it, is using the correlation coefficient. And so that measures the strength of relationship between variables. And we call this R, the correlation coefficient. And it's always going to be somewhere between negative 1 and 1. And at negative 1, it's strong negative. So when 1 goes up, the other tends to go down. On the right-hand side, strong positive. As 1 goes up, the other goes up as well. Now, if you're right in the middle, there's little or no correlation or relationship between these variables. So here's an example of some positive and negative correlations by their correlation coefficients. And so you can see in the case of stronger correlations, either closer to 1 or negative 1, that the points are closer together. And they look more linear. As those numbers get weaker, the data points start to spread out and the relationship is not as clear. So let's take a look at an example. Let's think about the basketball player LeBron James, and let's say we want to understand the relationship between his minutes per game and his field goal percentage. So in this case, we'll gather some data from his rookie season that shows us by game the minutes he played and his field goal percentage. So his field goal percentage is based on how many times he shoots it, what percentage does he actually make a basket. And so I use a tool called Minitab to do this, but you can use Excel or other tools. But once I do that, I'm going to get a scatter plot like this and a correlation coefficient. So on one axis, we see his minutes per game. And another, we see the field goal percentage. And every data point represents a different game. And we can tell by looking visually at the scatter plot, but also by looking at the correlation coefficient, that it's a positive relationship, but it's somewhat weak. 0.353. Now let's take a look at another example. Let's think about cement. And maybe we want to understand the relationship between the ingredients of the cement and characteristics of it. And so we gather data like this. We vary four ingredients in the mixture to assess the impact on overall heat generation. And so on the right-hand side here, you see four ingredients in the cement. And on the left, you see what's called heat evolved. And we want to understand how these ingredients are related to heat evolved, a measurement or characteristic of the cement. And so we can generate, in this case, a correlation matrix because we have more than two variables. And what you see highlighted here is the correlation coefficients of the relationships between the ingredients on the left and heat evolved. So two of them are fairly strong positive. So as the ingredients go up, heat evolved tends to go up as well. And the other two are negative. So as the ingredients go up, heat evolved tends to go down. Now, one thing to remember as we finish here is that correlation is not causation. So just because there were, there's a relationship in how they move, it doesn't mean that a change in one is causing the change in the other. So there's correlation, but not causation necessarily. That They don't equal each other. So experiments can be used to help us later with causation. Thanks for watching. As a reminder, if you want a free stats cheat sheet, you can find one at CodyBaldwin.com.